picture is now Rachel on the screen and if you look at the top right corner of the screen you'll see T minus 58 seconds uh, you'll see it an altitude of 46,000 feet we're seeing some shots of Branson and then this shot uh, from the ground of the mothership and we're about to see the the, uh, the, space, the space plane take off so so Rachel uh, 40 seconds to go they are now pretty confident they can actually launch uh, and they can move to this key moment you said that for a few seconds this plane's going to be in free fall, right? That's right, Brian. And that is that moment when everyone sort of holds their breath. Is this rocket going to ignite? Is this thing going to touch the edge of space? I want to point out that because this is a test flight, all the passengers on board, they are wearing parachutes. They also have additional uh, oxygen on board if necessary. You see that the pilots are wearing ox oxygen masks to the passengers, so they are not. But we are, we are about 10 plane. seconds away from release right yeah. here on the ground at Stanford America. You can hear the shout, the crowd cheering behind me. This is that historic moment that Richard Branson and his team at Virgin Galactic have been waiting for for nearly two decades. And we have release, Ryan. We have release. The rocket engine has ignited. This is the moment that Branson and his team have been waiting for. Oh, Brian, I gotta pause. I gotta take this in. Uh, this <laughs> is really an incredible moment here. I mean, this and is really viewers, what Branson and his team around is. the world, trust me, you're gonna see it in a moment. Rachel is a few seconds ahead of the stream that you're seeing on your television. So Rachel's telling us from the ground, she knows uh, that the Unity 22 has successfully fired its rocket. So Rachel, what's next? All right, so Brian, what I can tell you, and I, yes, I so, apologize for that delay, but we're 45 seconds into this burn. Now this rocket motor should be burning for about 60 seconds. That will catapult them to the edge of space. So we're lo really looking for that 60 second burn here on the ground. We're about three seconds away from it. So that's when we know that they are headed to the edge of space. Yeah, eight, that Branson will indeed seven, be getting his astronaut wing. And as you can hear from the crowd behind me, they have hit that moment. They are coasting to the edge of space here. Uh, they're and viewers on your television screen, we are now able to see what Rachel described. Babagsak pa lang si. Where you see the rocket burn actually happening. Kristen Fisher, what does this moment feel like to you on the ground there as well? Unbelievably exciting. And Brian, we can actually see Spaceship Two rocketing up in this space right now. We can see the moment when Spaceship Two released from the mothership. You can see uh, the smoke, the contrails from the ground as it rocketed up. Everybody on the ground here cheering, and now this spaceship is in the very capable hands of the two pilots on board this flight. Dave McKay, Michael Masuki, this is what they have trained their entire lives for. These are two very highly trained test pilots. They have been with Virgin Galactic for quite some time, and now they are responsible for the company's founder, Richard Branson, <laughs> achieving his lifelong dream of reaching space. And Richard Branson becoming the first of the billionaire space barons to make it into space on a ship that he funded and helped develop. You just, gosh, you just have to wonder how exciting he must be feeling right now as he approaches those few minutes of weightlessness. They are uh, traveling that, now at Mach 3, Kristen, more than 2,000 miles per hour. Put that into perspective for us. Well, the amount of G-forces that they must feel as they are rocketing up. I mean, you saw that moment of free fall, then the second that that rocket engine ignites, those astronauts are thrown back into their seat, pushed back, and then as it rockets up vertically into space, they are literally pressed down with all of those G-forces. And when you hear about these astronauts, or soon to be astronauts, I should say, but when you hear about how this crew was training, that's what they're talking about. They were doing all of those centrifugal trainings to, to get their bodies used to what it feels like to feeling all of those G-forces. Uh, they were also getting used to what it feels like uh, when you actually get those few minutes of weightlessness by traveling in, in the vomit comet, as they call it, those big, where you get those the big up and down curves and you get to experience just a few seconds of weightlessness. And now I, I believe uh, my 
What I am seeing is a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of what you guys are seeing, uh, but we did get a glimpse into uh, inside Spaceship Two, and maybe you guys will see it so that's in just in a, a few moment. more minutes. But um, we know the speed is slowing down dramatically now, now down to this Mach 1. Rachel, what does it feel like? Is it like a roller coaster where you have that momentary sensation of weightlessness, but you're feeling it for several minutes? That's exactly it, Brian. That's what they describe it as. That moment when you get to the very top of the roller coaster that's just coming out the edge, how that your stomach kind of drops and you're kind of uh, floating there for a minute. It's exactly that, but for a prolonged period of time. And we just saw here on the ground at Spaceport America a brief glimpse of Richard Branson and his fellow mission specialists floating in uh, microgravity inside VSS Unity, uh, earning those astronaut wings. And here on the ground, you, there's been tons of cheers here. They just announced that you know today space is virgin territory. So the team here at Virgin Galactic, incredibly proud virgin of what they have pulled off. Uh, you know they have been talking about Richard's flight, Richard's flight, Richard's flight. You know for nearly two decades now since they've been since they bought the technology to Spaceship One from the Ansari X Prize back in 2004. So you know this has been a long time in the making, and I cannot wait to speak to Sir Richard Branson when he lands after this historic flight and hear what he. Have to say, Brian. Retired NASA astronaut Daniel Tommy also with us. Uh, Daniel, describe the sensation that they're going through right now. I, well, uh, boy, my first moments of zero G are just, uh, uh, you know, just locked into my head. It's just fantastic. In my case, on the shuttle, we were strapped in pretty hard. So uh, uh, when you're strapped in, you don't really feel you're not like thrown out of your seat. But you see things. You, you you hold up your pencil or your book, and you let go, and it floats there. So for me, visually, it was the first thing. But then getting out of the seat, floating around, just a spectacular uh, sensation. And now that the plane is speeding back up, 17, uh, 1,700 miles per hour. So what's happening now? Are they coming out of weightlessness? Kind of, they're now heading actually quick, quickly back to Earth. They're now at 99. You know, so they're now the, the the period of weightlessness is now over. Tell us what's going to happen next, Daniel. Well, it's not clear it's over. So what's happening is they're, they're, they were they were flown, uh, uh, thrown up, and then they and the airplane are falling down to Earth at the same time. So they're going to be picking up speed as they fall down to the Earth. But inside the airplane, that's that's them floating inside the spaceship. So so it is picking up velocity, but inside you're still floating relative to this the spaceship. So that's the zero g feeling that you're getting. And once they come back into the atmosphere and engage all the uh, Aero surfaces so that they can start slowing down and making their way back to the runway. That's when they'll pick up the G's and uh, and uh, that that zero G time will be over for them. All right, Daniel, stay with us. CNN Aerospace Analyst Miles O'Brien also with us. Miles, uh, viewers know you've been covering the space programs plural for decades. What feels different about this one to you, Miles? Well, Brian, it takes me back to uh, 2004 when we watched Spaceship One uh, fly three times that year, eventually winning the Ansari X Prize. And at that time, uh, we thought, oh, this is going to be uh, widely adopted for a lot of people within five years. Here we are 17 years later, hmm. and this is finally happening. Space is hard. Some people died along the way. Uh, and the question we have to all ask ourselves is, you know, is this worth it? And it's hard to know. We know this is a pivotal moment when people suddenly have the sense that they can be a part of space. I remember being in the hangar in Mojave, California, after the X Prize was won by that team, and being with the pilot and the spacecraft just a short time after they flew, and it was felt very accessible to me. And I think that's an important thing to take away here: is that this makes space incrementally a little more accessible you know and so it's billionaires now who else is going to do it nasa was never going to do this for us so let's let the billionaires spend their money have a little fun and uh as time goes on and we do this more we hope the price will go down you know and from we went from the ford tri-motor in the 20s to you know airbus a380s and we all fly all over the world uh let's hope that that's the course we're headed on and and you and I, Brian, will get a chance to fly. Uh, Miles, you first. You first. You burned it with your <laughs> decades of educating all the rest of us about uh, not just this world, but out of this world. Back to Rachel Crane on the ground. Rachel, is what we're now seeing the feathering system where this space plane's raising its wings, uh, it's reorienting, and now falling back to Earth to prepare to land. Is that right? That's right. 
That's right, Brian. And, you know, here on the ground at Spaceport America, we actually just heard the sonic booms of re-entry, which, you know, we didn't know we were going to hear that. So that was quite amazing. That was something that the crowd, they started cheering about. Now, we did just see the emergency response vehicles head out. Oh, we're hearing Richard right now on the ground here at Spaceport America. I know you guys have the delay, but we're hearing uh, he's speaking to us right now. Can't quite make out what he's saying, but he's back strapped into his seat. I'm sure he's speaking about the experience. Cannot wait to hear what he has to say. Um, but really, once we saw him strap himself into the seat, he was grabbing his fellow mission specialists. They were clearly taking in this moment. Clearly, this is, a, as, as we've been speaking about, this is two decades in the making for him and his team. So, you know, this was a, a very historic, meaningful moment to Richard Branson. As I said, we just heard from him. We see him and his mission specialists back in their seat. They're starting reentry. And, I, you know, we know that there was a weather delay here at Spaceport America for this launch this morning. Uh, that was because of winds. But another important thing to remember is that this is a glider when it's coming back in. So that's why that wind speed is also so important. Uh, the weather specifications for this kind of launch are not nearly as stringent as the ones for, you know, those the crewed uh, ISS missions that we right. that we see from SpaceX recently. But, you know, there still are weather specifications and visibility because, as I said, this is a glider, so they want to have very clear visibility and very low winds. And there's not the class of sky right now. Hey, Rachel, stand by. I think we can now hear Branson speak. It's complete now I'm looking down at a beautiful space for uh, congratulations to everybody for, uh, for creating such a beautiful, beautiful place. Congratulations to all our wonderful teams of the last 10 to 17 years of hard, hard work together this far. A live feed from on board the VSS Unity, Richard Branson, and that wide shot you can see is on there with the other passengers. So as they are now gliding back down to Earth, what a beautiful morning in New Mexico. Kristen Fisher, you're near Truth or Consequences. Now that town uh, wasn't always named that. That was named in the 1950s as part of a PR stunt by a radio station. And I can't help but think that here we are 70 years later, this is on one level a giant PR stunt. It is also inspiring to countless millions who are watching around the world. Are you able to see the glider, the, the plane gliding back down right now, Kristen? I cannot see it just yet, but I sure heard that sonic sonic boom. And, and, and you know, Brian, <laughs> you're right. This is a publicity stunt, but it's also inspiring. I mean, you can have both of those things th those things happening at the same time, and and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is this new era of spaceflight. This is commercial spaceflight, the privatization and democratization, hopefully, of spaceflight. And, you know, uh, a lot of people maybe aren't so thrilled that there are all these billionaires in space, or about to be not one, but perhaps two billionaires in space. A lot of folks aren't thrilled that there's going to be a lot of branding in space, right? There's We saw Land Rovers out here this morning, but, but brands in space, this is uh, a critical part of this new era of space travel because in order to make spaceflight more accessible and more affordable, you have to have things like this happen. And so let's just take a moment. We're looking in the sky right now to see if we can see it. Um, I can see there it is, Spaceship Two and the mothership right overhead gliding in for an absolutely beautiful re-entry and it appears that that re-entry it is directly overhead of me right now and it appears that that feathering the re-entry feathering system that caused that 2014 accident deadly accident uh working just beautifully no problems here today at least from what i can tell and so now it's going to be descending in a spiral motion really acting as a glider as Spaceship Two makes its way right back, landing on the runway that it took off from, from Spaceport America. And so, Brian, I, I mean, what a name for this place. Spaceport America in truth or consequences, New Mexico. And the entire state of New Mexico is really hoping that this marks the beginning of, of a new era of space tourism, brings in tons of business for this very remote and desolate stretch uh, of, of, of desert. Uh, the Mojave Desert here in New Mexico. And so any minute now, uh, we should see Spaceship Two landing on this runway. And Richard Branson now 
officially an astronaut, according to the U.S. government, the FAA, and the U.S. military. I understand the Carmen line, uh, a lot of other uh, countries say that he did not quite make it, but hey, he was weightless, and the U.S. government recognizes him as an astronaut and all the other members of his crew. And so they're going to land, I would imagine, Richard Branson style. There's probably yeah. going to be some popping of champagne. There's going to be a concert, some music. And then these new astronauts are going to get their wings. Both your parents were astronauts, Kristen. My, uh, my grandfather was a, was a NASA uh, staffer during Apollo. And I just keep wondering, what would he make of this today? If he were here today to see these billionaires racing into space, it's the start of a remarkable new age, and we can debate the pros and cons, but it is now happening. It's now here. And you can see this plane about to come back down on the same runway uh, where the mothership took off exactly an hour ago. So, Rachel, 60 minutes up to the edge of space and back. Not too shabby. Hey, Brian. Once again, Brian has safely landed here on that 12,000-foot runway at Spaceport America. Richard Branson has fulfilled his lifelong dream of becoming an astronaut. Richard Branson has long said that he was inspired by the Apollo missions and he has wanted to be an astronaut for his entire life. Well, today is the day that he, along with his team, have a treat, achieved that dream. They are hoping that this is a major step forward in a democratizing space, opening that final frontier to uh, the rest of us. Of course, right now we know that those tickets are going for around $200,000 a seat, but this moment, uh, they, you know, I, I, it's hard to overemphasize for the team here. Uh, at Virgin Galactic and Space for America and really for New Mexico what this moment means. You can, once again, you can hear the cheers behind me, which really just uh, hammers home how significant this moment is for the team. We know that Richard Branson, upon landing, is uh, planning to make a major announcement that he's been teasing. And of course, uh, Brian, in typical Richard Branson fashion, he will be making uh, a huge spectacle about this very successful flight that he has just embarked on, he and his team and his fellow mission specialists. So we know that there's going to be a, a live musical performance, but we are all eagerly awaiting to hear what this experience like was for Richard. You know, he's, we've always heard from people that have traveled to space how it fundamentally changes them. That's something that Branson has, you know, said is the motivating factor behind him and his team getting people to to, to space so they can be fundamentally impacted by seeing, you know, the curvature of the Earth and really get a sense of that we are all one on mothership Earth, becoming, you know, environmentalists and, and understanding the fragility of our planet. And of course, there's no moment in time more important for that to really be absorbed by everybody around the globe than this moment with what we're seeing with global warming, climate change, and what have you. And of course, Richard Branson is a big environmentalist. So, you know, as I said, Brian, it's really hard to overemphasize what this moment means to Branson, his team, his friends, his family, also space enthusiasts around the world, and also, you know, for space reporters like myself, I mean, we've been following this since its infancy, so to, to, to really absorb that this has just happened, and there was no mishaps that we know of from, from our perspective, it went off without a hitch, and Richard Branson will soon be awarded his astronaut wings, along with two of his fellow mission specialists, I mean, really, it, it's a moment that gives you goosebumps, it's a moment, Brian, as a reporter, you know, we all have those moments that we that we put in the memory book forever, that we know we're never going to forget, we're going to hold on to for the rest of our lives. I got to tell you, this is one of those for me. Absolutely. I know your kids are watching, my kids are watching, Kristen's kids are watching, and they're going to grow up in a world where this is pretty normal. Uh, the headline right now is a space plane has just landed safely at Spaceport America, carrying Richard Branson, who has been wanting to do this for two decades. But Rachel, the notion of a space plane, a space port, all this language, uh, this is going to become common language, I think, probably sooner rather than later. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I also want to point out, you talk about space plane, but that's, this, is, this, of course, is a, you know, uh, rocket-powered space plane that Branson and his team have
that build. That's their vehicle. That's their system. It's made it with uh, the mothership Eve. But Jeff Bezos' system is much more of what the typical, you know, spacecraft rocket system that people think of looks like. It's a automated space capsule. It's not. It does not look like an airplane, like the like the way that you know most people might view this vehicle and say, oh, it just looks like an airplane. It looks familiar. It looks like the shuttles did. Uh, but Blue Origin system uh, is a space capsule. It's fully automated, but as we know, today's uh, flight was piloted. Two pilots were on this. This was the fourth uh, space flight for Virgin Galactic. They've had many other uh, piloted flights, but none of them, you know, they were the gliders, they were the mothership. Uh, of course, this is still in its test phases, so I want to point out that the, all of the passengers on board, they were all wearing uh, parachutes and the off chance that there was an anomaly, uh, as well as there was supplemental oxygen on board. I told you earlier that we saw some of the emergency response vehicles driving out to the runway. Of course, those were all just precautions that were taken uh, because this is still a test flight. Virgin Galactic saying that there will be two additional test flights before they begin their commercial operations in the beginning of 2022. But as you just pointed out, Brian, I mean, our children will grow up in a world where space travel is, you know, normal, where their next door neighbor may have gone up to space and have their astronaut wings. So, I mean, this is really the dawn of a new era of space exploration and space travel. That's what, you know, so many of us have been waiting for, is that final frontier to be open for the rest of us. So Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and others have been working diligently on opening uh, the heavens for us. And right now, as we know, they cost the first penny to get there. But, of course, those early adopters, they're willing to throw down the big bucks so that, you know, the market can drive the cost in the right direction for the rest of us so we can all experience what Richard Branson just got to experience. I mean, weightlessness. He's getting his astronaut wings. I can't wait to hopefully one day get mine, Brian. Hopefully not too long from now. And Richard, we're going to see Branson. We're going to see the, uh, the other passengers shortly as they disembark. Uh, but now that they're back on the ground, let's talk a little bit more about what this means uh, 